temperature. We have two goals for this session. We're going to talk about uh, temperature and temperature scales, and then we'll introduce the idea of thermal expansion. So what exactly is temperature anyway? Well, temperature is a measure of the average internal energy of an object or a system. Internal energy is energy associated with the motion of atoms or molecules. So temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms and molecules making up an object or a system. And we'll have more on that in our next video. Okay, so let's think about temperature scales. So we see a lovely picture of a thermometer here and looks like it's pretty chilly outside. It's either 32 degrees on some scale or zero on another scale or 273 on yet a third scale. So, and one thing you notice is that the Celsius and Kelvin scales, the two on the right, are offset from one another by about 273 degrees, but the differences from one degree to the next are all the same. Right? You go up by 5 degrees Celsius, that's the change, same change as going up by 5 Kelvin. On the other hand, the Fahrenheit scale is, is somewhat different. Okay, so a change by 1 degree Celsius is the same as a as a change by 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if we want to go back and forth between those two scales, then we say the temperature in Celsius is 5 degrees Celsius divided by 9 degrees Fahrenheit multiplied by the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Or the other way, the temperature in Fahrenheit is 9 degrees Fahrenheit divided by 5 degrees Celsius that's multiplied by the temperature in Celsius, and then you add on 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And note that the uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius scales agree at minus 40 degrees, and then they go up from there. So if you go to uh, 40 degrees up from minus 40, you get to zero on the Celsius scale, and the same change would get you 72 degrees higher on the Fahrenheit scale. You'd be at plus 32. Okay, so one thing to point out, uh, if you have equations that involve temperature, if the equation just has a T in it, okay, like PV equals NRT, then you use an absolute temperature. And generally, our absolute scale that we use is the Kelvin scale. On the other hand, if the equation involves delta T, it doesn't matter whether you use Celsius or Kelvin. Right? A change by 5 degrees Celsius is the same as a change by 5 degrees Kelvin. So delta T, you can use either one, but if it's just a T, you've got to be on the Kelvin scale, or at least an absolute temperature scale. Okay, so how do we measure temperature? Okay, so you, as you know, a device we use to measure temperature is known as, the, as a thermometer, and every thermometer that exists exploits the fact that some property of a material depends on temperature. And there's lots of things that are temperature dependent. So you can make a thermometer based on the pressure in a sealed container of gas, for instance, the volume occupied by a liquid, that's often what is used. You can do it from the voltage that's generated across a junction of two different metals, in fact. It's known as a thermocouple. And so those effects and lots of other things can be used to make a thermometer. Okay, so the last concept we want to talk about today is thermal expansion. So we'll start with just one dimension, what we call linear expansion. So most materials expand when they're heated. And as long as the temperature change isn't too big, then each dimension of an object experiences a change in length that is just proportional to, to the change in temperature. So we have a fairly simple model of how the length changes. So we can say the change in length is the original length L0 times some constant alpha times delta T. Or, in an equivalent way, we can say the new length is the old length multiplied by 1 plus alpha delta T. Okay, so L0 again is the original length and alpha is called the coefficient of linear expansion. And that's a number that just depends on the material. Okay, so here's a table 
showing various alpha values. Notice these numbers are multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. They're actually very small numbers. So aluminum has a bigger alpha than copper, which is bigger than iron, which is bigger than glass. Okay, so that just gives you a feel for various uh, expansion coefficients. So we say aluminum has a thermal expansion coefficient of 23 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. That's the linear thermal expansion coefficient. Okay, so what about volume expansion? And we've jumped from linear, you know, one dimension to three dimensions, and you could actually go to two dimensions as well. And so what we find is that the change in volume is the old volume multiplied by three alpha delta t. If it was area, you'd do delta a is a naught two alpha delta t. So each dimension gets you another factor of alpha. Or you could say the new volume is the old volume multiplied by one plus three alpha delta t. Okay, and v naught is the original volume. Okay, that is it for today.